this is one of the most talked about new motorcycle helmets going on the market right now. You know, a lot of companies have tried to make a smart helmet. Let's see if this is the best option to date. This is the Foresight MK1S. I was sent the MK1S for review, and that's what we'll do this week on MC Rider. I want to give you my thoughts and opinions on this helmet. So what is a Foresight MK1S, and why is it getting so much buzz? Well, the MK1S is a carbon fiber smart motorcycle helmet that combines Bluetooth integration. It's got a 1080p camera integrated into it and a built-in, I'd say, HUD-like notifications that in, work in conjunction with their iPhone and Android app to provide navigation and turn-by-turn -turn directions, things like that. In addition to the helmet, you get this Bluetooth control device that you can mount to the handlebars of your motorcycle. Unfortunately, the mount that comes with this is not big enough for the handlebars on the Indian Challenger, so I was limited there in trying to get this mounted. But before we get into the stuff that a lot of people are interested in, the electronics that are built into this, we have to address the primary purpose of any motorcycle helmet, and that's how does it perform as a helmet. As far as certifications go, the MK1S is in good shape. It's DOT certified, but more importantly, in my opinion, it's got an ECE 22.05 certification as well. That carries a whole lot more weight in my book and proves that it's been crash tested and it's up to European standards, which are more stringent than the DOT standards. So Foresight claims that the helmet is designed for an intermediate oval shaped head. Think something similar in shape or fit to a showy line of helmets. So showy is my go-to helmet. I wear a showy extra large and an extra large in the Foresight helmet fit me as expected. It did seem a little bit rounder in shape than a showy helmet because I did have some pressure on my forehead whenever I initially started wearing it. I wouldn't say that it was extremely uncomfortable. It went away after breaking the helmet in a little bit, but it is slightly different shaped helmet than a showy if you've got any experience with showy helmets. You know, it's odd that the Foresight shows an internal drop-down visor. So on the website, it supposedly has an internal drop-down visor with a switch right here on the side of the helmet. You can see there's no switch on the helmet right here. I'm not sure why um, that's the case. If this was a pre-release helmet and it was sent to me earlier than what is going out to the public, I reached out to Foresight on that and I've yet to hear back from them to see what the issue is with the drop-down internal visor. Because this helmet's made from carbon fiber, it's relatively lightweight, even though it's got all of the electronics that are built into it. So using my Shoei RF1400 as a standard, we'll use that as the test standard. It weighs in at 66.4 ounces on my scale here in the shop with a center Bluetooth communicator attached to the side of the Shoei RF1400. This is an extra large again. The Foresight with Bluetooth and a camera that's already built into it weighs in at 63.8 ounces. So it's a little bit lighter to begin with than the Shoei is. But if you had a GoPro camera and a mount to the front of the Shoei RF1400, because that's what the MK1S has got on it, it has that integrated camera. In addition to the Bluetooth on the side of the helmet, the Shoei's weight goes up to 74.3 ounces. So that carbon fiber shell really pays off for the Foresight lid when it comes to saving weight. And even in spite of having all of the electronics already integrated into the helmet, it's still a very lightweight helmet. The airflow on the helmet seems adequate out on the highway. It fills on par with the RF1400. Maybe even a little bit more airflow from this helmet than I get from the Shoei helmets. It's got a shutoff valve here uh, on the front. You know, at your brow area, it's got two here, and then it's got a shutoff valve in the back. And again, it flows really good air. Uh, have no issues at all with the amount of air that the helmet is able to move through it. The visor mechanism is decent, I would say. It's not as smooth as the showy helmets and feels a little less premium than you might find on some other helmets. It does offer detents in the mechanism. So you can keep it partially cracked to provide additional airflow. The face shield is pinlock ready and it comes with a pinlock from Foresight. 
I do miss that drop down visor though that was supposed to be on this helmet and that's a fairly big deal for me having this one eye that stays dilated being able to get out of the sun as much as I can is really helpful and that's another issue with the helmet I don't know if it's because it's supposed to come with the internal visor but finding a tinted shield I've not had any luck with that yet so you know, until I can find the tinted shield on it, I'm probably not going to ride with this a whole lot during bright conditions. The liner and the padding feel very nice to the touch. I believe the helmet, this helmet's got the premium liner, which is an optional upgrade. And it feels very similar to me of what you'd expect from a like a Schuberth helmet. If you've ever held a Schuberth helmet, it's got a really nice padding and really comfortable. So one thing that I like about the helmet is how the liner cups under the chin. So let me get it back over here. You can see the inside part of this, it's got this, you know, the foam padding really cups around your chin, so along your jawline, and that serves a real important purpose of keeping wind noise down. So this is one of the quieter helmets that I've ridden with because it does such a good job of shielding your head from the wind because of the design of the the liner in that helmet so for me the standard bearer for motorcycle helmets is the showy rf 1400 that's my favorite helmet to wear and the best that i've owned to date and if i rated that showy helmet at a 10 on a scale of 1 to 10 i would rate the foresight at a 7 to a 7.5 when we're just talking about the quality and comfort and build and design of the helmet. So since I rate this at a 7 to a 7.5, for me when it comes to the protection that's afforded and the ECE uh, certification, the quality of build, the fit and finish, and some of that which is very subjective, this is an above average helmet in my opinion and one that I wouldn't have a problem putting on and riding all day. So for me, it's a major drawdown not having the drop down visor or at least being able to purchase a fully tinted visor and that's gonna keep it on the shelf rather than my head at times when the sun's really bright outside. But the thing is the Foresight MK1S is a lot more than just a helmet though and that's where things start to get interesting the Foresight MK1S has Bluetooth that's built into it that allows the rider to listen to music. You can receive phone calls and get voice prompts from the GPS. As far as listening to music, the speakers are from Harman Kardon and they provide a really fantastic listening experience. Because that design of the liner that I talked about, it really isolates you from the wind noise. The speakers are very loud, they're very clear, and they provide as good or better listening experience than you know anything else I've used on a motorcycle you know that includes Senna and Cardo that I've used in helmets in the past these are as good or better than those but this is not a Bluetooth communicator in that it doesn't have the ability to pair with other helmets like a Cardio or Senna would to provide helmet to helmet communication it's strictly for receiving a Bluetooth source from your smartphone and allowing you to listen to music and you know for entertainment purposes or turn-by-turn -turn navigation when this helmet is paired with your phone you can use the foresight app for navigation and the helmet will show a light just below the face shield so you'll see a small light that provides turn information road hazards and other traffic alerts you'll also get an audio alert with the turn-by-turn -turn navigation and you know as things the alerts appear on the lights you get a audio alert with that as well but i still prefer using other navigation software you know i'm stuck with google maps i really enjoy google maps and i've got a lot of my stuff already in there and i like to be able to glance at the map so if you've got a system like a ride command in a the indian challenger and you're used to using that for navigation the foresight feels like it's a few step backwards having to glance down at a phone or use their proprietary app in order to get navigation. But in addition, the app has been a little bit buggy for me. I've had a difficult time getting it to connect to the helmet at times. You know, it doesn't just immediately connect whenever I put the helmet on. Sometimes there's the back and forth, of, okay, turn the helmet off, start the app up, then turn the helmet on, and that back and forth trying to get everything connected. It doesn't always work real smoothly. Plus the lights that are uh, in your peripheral vision. At times, you know, in really bright sunny conditions, I have a hard time picking those up and seeing that. And it becomes a bigger distraction for me than, 
you know, the benefit that you would gain for it. So you could turn the directional light feature off if that's distracting to you. And it's probably something that I wouldn't use too much whenever I'm writing. I've got other navigation software that I'm more used to. And there are not enough new features in the Foresight to make me feel the need to switch at this point. So that leaves the last really big feature, and that's the camera system. So this is a 1080p camera that records at 60 frames per second. And in my opinion, this is the best integrated camera system that I've used. There have been other smart helmets that have tried to attach, you know, a camera to the helmet. And I think Senna's got a Bluetooth communicator that's got a, help, a camera built into their Bluetooth. But this being integrated into the chin bar is by far the best integration I've seen to date. You know, it virtually disappears on the helmet. You truly forget that it's there just because it goes into the chin, doesn't provide any extra weight. You've got nothing hanging off the front of your helmet and no cables dangling anywhere. If you're trying to set up the audio communications, you know, a lot of people like to vlog and they'll set up a microphone to their GoPro camera and then you've got to run that and get it all tucked inside the helmet. There's none of that with this helmet. It's all built in and it's all wire free. So it's, you know, much easier to use and to live with on a daily basis. So here's a sample video of the camera, using the camera and the built-in microphone. So I'll get up to speed and we'll talk a little bit, give you a chance to hear what this sounds like on the road. Okay, so here I am with the app. I wanted to run this portion of it just to give you guys an idea of how this would work for vloggers. So the engine's not running right now. Um, this is the audio level straight from the microphone in the uh, Foresight helmet. So let's get the bike cranked up. We'll ride down the road a little bit, give you an idea of what you can expect going down the road with this setup if you like to vlog and do a commentary on your rides. We're running at about 64 miles per hour right now. And we've got the windshield. Let me get the windshield all the way down. So that's as low as the windshield will go. Let's see what these audio levels are like when I get back to the house. I've got quite a bit of wind coming through this helmet. So when that windshield is down, it really pulls a lot of help, uh, wind through this helmet. I'd say at least on par with the Showy RF 1400, maybe even, you know, a little bit more. So the camera's good. It's 1080p, 60 frames per second. I wouldn't say that it's GoPro good, but it's very usable for YouTube and just to log your rides. One drawback is that the camera doesn't have a lot of the features that you're going to find on a GoPro. There's no stabilization of the video, which is a, the biggest drawback for me. You can only record 1080, 60 frames per second, so there's no 4K recording, no still photos, no time-lapse recording, so there's no change in the view on the camera. You're stuck with that chin mount camera, and that's the only view you're going to get. You're not able to mount it on other places like you would a GoPro, but I would say 90% of my uh, video work is from a chin-mounted camera. So if you're happy with 1080p at 60 frames per second, then this is a camera that's very usable. I would say outside of be losing the image stabilization that you get with the GoPro, this does provide a very good recording option and it's mounted in a place that I use 90% of the time when I'm recording video. So let me run down some of the pros and cons of the helmet and we'll get to the cons first. There's no helmet control buttons on this. You either use this controller, which I can't mount to the handlebars on my bike, or you use their smartphone app to make any 
adjustments to the helmet at all. So if you want to adjust the volume up or down, there's no buttons on the helmet to adjust the volume. If you want to start recording, there's no button, there's no voice commands on the helmet to start and stop recording. You're going to use this or you're going to use the iPhone app, which makes it a little bit less convenient. I would love to see just volume controls and a start stop button for the camera on this helmet would really increase the functionality to me. Like I said, there's no voice activated controls. You can't answer your call with the voice. No ability to ask Siri for directions or to use voice assistant whenever you're writing. So you're using the app, you're using the Bluetooth controller. The app is not CarPlay compatible. So I've got an Apple CarPlay on my Challenger and I use it all the time. This app would be much more useful to me if I could integrate it into CarPlay and then I could bring the navigation up on my screen. I would have, you know, the lights in the helmet and I would also be able to glance at the map to see where the turn is. So the camera on this has no options. There's 1080p at 60 frames per second. That's what it provides, that's what you get. Beyond that, you can start and stop the camera from recording, but there are no other features available on this camera. Another major drawback that a lot of people won't necessarily think about is that it's only got one battery for the Bluetooth and the camera. So Foresight claims that you're going to get about three hours of recording time from the helmet, uh, a fully charged helmet, but you have to consider that you're drawing from the same power source that your Bluetooth is using. So if you use up all your battery recording videos, you've also used up all of your battery for your Bluetooth until you can get somewhere to recharge. So that's something to consider. Uh, the battery life on this, you're using both for the Bluetooth and the camera. And if you run totally out using the camera, then you're done listening to music or navigation for the day. Now for the pros of this helmet, it's a good helmet. I like the fit and finish of it. I think they're great. It does an exceptional job of blocking out wind and wind noise. It's a lightweight helmet in spite, of, in spite of all the electronics that are installed on it. And the lining has a really great fit to it as well. I'd say it's comparable in shape to a showy helmet. Not exactly, but close enough for comfort. The Bluetooth integration for entertainment purposes is great. The speakers are loud enough and the sound is good for listening to music on the road. The camera integration in this is very well done. It's there when you need it and it's out of the way when you don't want it. And if you've got the helmet charged, you've got a helmet that's ready to record the journey along the way. You know, doing a quick search for this helmet online, I'm only seeing one or two stores that have this in stock in the US right now. And it looks like they're being listed at MSRP, which is $1,099 for this helmet, US dollars. Now that may seem like a lot of money, and it is $1,000 for a helmet, but if you've priced a carbon fiber helmet, you know that none of those carbon fiber helmets are cheap. So for $1,099 for the Foresight MK1S, you get a carbon fiber helmet, you get navigation controls, so the integrated lights in there, if that's something you want to use, you get a Bluetooth and decent 1080p camera that's installed and integrated into the helmet. So let's see how much that would cost for an equivalent setup with the Showy RF 1400 as the base for our setup. So you can buy a Showy RF 1400 in a solid color on Amazon right now for $579. And in my opinion, this is a better helmet than the Foresight has to offer. You can purchase a Sentinel Bluetooth communicator from anywhere from $160 on the low end to $600 on the high end, depending on which model you go for. And for this test, we'll split the difference and we'll say you're spending 300 bucks on a Bluetooth communicator. You can get a GoPro again, depending on which model you get. You can spend anywhere from three to $400 to get a GoPro, much less if you look for a GoPro knockoff. But some of those GoPro knockoffs are really hurting in quality. So we'll say for this test to get a comparable camera or probably a better camera in the GoPro, you're looking to spend at least $300 on that. So that brings the showy setup to $1,179, but there's a lot of play in that depending on the options that you choose. And in my opinion, the showy's a better helmet with equivalent Bluetooth and a better camera if you set it up like, you know, like I've got mine with the, I've got the Senna Bluetooth communicator on the side. I've got the GoPro 
uh, mounts it to the front of it. It's not nearly as elegant though as the offering from Foresight and that's where the Foresight really starts to shine. So the Foresight really begins to shine when you look at the Bluetooth and the camera integration, especially if you're someone who likes to vlog. I don't do much vlogging, but you've got a lot of wires to hide if you're using a showy setup and you're running a microphone to your helmet. You know, you've got all that stuff that you have to hide on the helmet. It's just not convenient at all. This Foresight is really nice because, I mean, that's everything right there. It's built into it. You've got your camera right here in the chin. You've got Bluetooth and a microphone built into the helmet. You've got everything in here that you need to begin vlogging and recording video in a really elegant, well-laid-out design. So while the Showy is better probably in overall quality, it loses big points in convenience when compared to the Foresight. So at the end of the day, it comes down to which one you value more. Do you want the best quality you can get? And are you willing to sacrifice convenience to get it? Or are you okay with good to great, which the Foresight would be? Even if it's not the best, absolute best, it's very user-friendly and it's always ready to go just right out of the box. If I could solve this issue of finding a tinted screen for the Foresight, this helmet will go into my helmet rotation. There will be times when I grab this off the rack if I know that I'm going out to record and I just want the convenience of grabbing a helmet, everything built into it, and I'm ready to record something for MC Rider. But I do think, if I'm being honest and I was going on a long, epic journey, I'm riding across country, something that I want the absolute best quality for on an extended trip, I'd still reach for my trusty showy helmet. I think it's a better helmet, even if it's got the Senna hanging off on one side, the GoPro hanging off the front. I think that would be my go-to if I was on a long extended journey for the reasons that I've mentioned in this video. So I hope you found this review helpful, and I want to thank Foresight for sending me the helmet and allowing me to provide my honest opinion to you and what I thought about the helmet. Till next week, guys, it's Kim with MC Rider, and I'll see you on the road.